Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome again to Free Libya. Uh, this morning, I would like to talk about innovation and creativity in the Muslim world. The reason I'm talking about this, because really, the innovation is behind progress. And I would like to see in, in the slides I'm going to share with you today, how much the Muslims at this time in history, how, much, how creative they are, and if they are not, what we're going to do to inspire creativity and innovation again. First of all, I'm going just to um, make some definitions here. Invention. What do we mean by the word invention? Really, it is the creation of something new, something like this, some gadget, or some new concept, or a new process. So that's the invention itself. So creation of something that has never been made before. Innovation is really the transformation of ideas into something that will benefit society. Anything that will benefit human beings by taking some idea or some knowledge and, and changing it to become a benefit, then clearly that's an innovation. So this innovation can be a product, <clears throat> can be a process, can be a regulation, or can be something, anything that will benefit a human being. So anything that will benefit is an innovation, that's what. Now, entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is really by taking some <coughs> ideas or acts to convert that into commercialization, to change it into business. That means somebody will have an idea like this, but at the same time, they'll be able to convert it into business, a product that will make money. And then after that, clearly that will feed into the, uh, uh, into the economic growth and prosperity. So if we look at the, what I'm calling here the innovation cycle, you start by, clearly the first thing is we need to find an innovative environment. And this is really very essential to this. The environmental environment that will lead people to do, to invent, so that we get the invention. Then we need to go from the invention uh, by entrepreneurship, then we can change that into a business and it becomes a commercialization. Uh, that will be coming out, and the commercialization will lead to economic prosperity, and economic prosperity will lead to a better innovative environment, and we go into the cycle over and over again, and we bring up the prosperity for the people there. Uh, uh, the, uh, the innovation itself, uh, uh, Mike Mandel said one time, if you want real economic growth, then you have to have new technologies. This is now uh, what the Prime Minister mentioned by the the, 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 the clearly the knowledge-based uh, development that we, we have. Uh, and of course, if you uh, look what um, uh, one of the great innovators of our time, Bill Gates, uh, he said in one time, he said for centuries, uh, people thought, assumed that economic growth, really the interplay between labor and capital. Uh, but today, clearly, we know there is one element which is so important, which is the innovation. Innovation is the most critical factor in economic growth. Uh, the uh, innovation clearly leads to economic growth. And the reason for that, because when people innovate, they bring something new, something very creative, and be able to change that and present it to the marketplace, create jobs, and also at the same time, will be able to lead uh, to, uh, to the, the leading to that. And so people will live, live uh, happily and also they have prosper in that world. Uh, the, uh, uh, today, so we're going to use, are there a way to ca that we can measure innovation? Is there factors that we can use, are some metrics that we can use to see how creative people are and how innovative people are? Uh, of course, uh, part of this innovation really is scientific and technologically based. So there is a number of metrics that we will have. Uh, first of all is clearly this innovation comes out from its ideas, the creativity of the mind. And we then look at those, we call them the researchers those who they research uh, and, and, and do investigate and be able to come with something new, new ideas and so on. Uh, then, of course, to be able to have researchers, then somebody has to invest some money in those. So we have to look into the uh, research expenditures, how much the government, how much the country is investing into research. And, and after that, when these researchers, they get the money and they will do their research, they clearly they have to have something out. What is the product of that? Usually the product of that can be scholarly uh, uh, publications. They will publish papers that are clearly are the, the, the result of their work. That means they are creating knowledge uh, out there. 
Also, at the same time, some of those publications, some of the scholarly work, can become into inventions, uh, patents, uh, which gives you intellectual property. So this person will own an idea. So it is not only own a car, but he can own an idea. You can own a patent which becomes yours and protected, and you'll be rewarded for that. And of course, a lot of these patents, you take them, and clearly you want to do something with them. So you're going to take them out from there and start a new business with them. So we're going to call this now here as the startup companies, where people, one person dreaming at night, he has a great idea, he made a patent, and he want to start something business. The next day, he'll be working 24 hours for the next several years to build that company up. And of course, this is a one person or two persons companies that really, at the end, end up being thousands and thousands of people and create the great jobs for that. So this is, so we're going to look at a number of these here. Uh, so first of all, if you look at the science indicators, this is now the number of researchers. And I'm looking into here the Muslim world itself, and, and there are some numbers here that you look at it. The, if you look at the, um, the average uh, for the very advanced countries, uh, like Finland uh, uh, and, and, and Sweden and Japan and the United States and so on, uh, probably they have about 5,000 researchers per million people. So clearly it's a huge very large number of researchers in every society. Now, if you look at the, um, uh, the organization of the Islamic countries, the OIC countries, probably the only country that shows up that have a large number of researchers is Jordan, with about 2,000 researchers per million, which is very, very great. And, but if you look at the average uh, for, the, for the Muslim countries, uh, it is less than 500, so very small. So you look at the 500 and the 5,000 there. And by the way, also these numbers here, a lot of times they are very questionable. Can, or they're really measuring it. Is they are getting the real data? And are these researchers really effective researchers? Or are we just labeling them researchers, but they are not doing much research? So all of this has to be taken into account. But if we believe the numbers, then clearly the numbers are very small. Uh, and of course, if you look at the, in the world itself, you'll find the lowest numbers, the lowest in the last 28 countries, it is our Muslim countries. So clearly, we're not doing very well when it comes to, to number of researchers. Uh, now, if you look at the, um, uh, again, this is researchers per million, but this is taking into, uh, if you look at the thing, the spike going up there, it is, uh, it is Jordan. These are from 1998 to 2007. Uh, the, all the extreme to the right, which you cannot see very well, uh, the one before last, that's Tunisia. Clearly, there's a quite significant increase uh, in, the, in the number of researchers. And the last one is Turkey, uh, which is also increasing there. So Jordan, just one spike there. And that was, the number was from, I think, 2004. Uh, so there are some countries who they have some increase in the number of researchers. And, um, and now if we compare those with some of the countries which have really have made great changes over the last few years, uh, which is here, uh, the Republic of Korea and Singapore, and I'm just measuring with Turkey because clearly all of us, we admire Turkey's progress over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, clearly, if you look at the numbers here, clearly uh, Turkey is probably averaging about 1,000 per million now, uh, while South, uh, South Korea, the Republic of Korea, is about 6,000, and Singapore is approximately about 7,000 researchers per million. So clearly you can see the difference, and a country like Turkey, which is very advanced, has a long way to go. Uh, so, so this is a, you know, just a, uh, a graph shows the countries of the world and, and how many researchers they have. Uh, these are the number of researchers. So the largest number is there is the United States with about 1.5 million researchers. So these people are doing research. And these are very serious numbers. So these are uh, China is about almost the same number. Then after that, you get Japan and then, and then uh, Federal Republic and so on. So the, clearly, you can see the numbers there. Uh, this is here, uh, again, uh, similar, but now researchers per million, but looking at many, many countries in the world. So if you look at all the way extreme right uh, is, uh, is some of the sub-Saharan countries where they have about 67, the Arab countries about 198. So clearly, we're not doing very well in that case. Uh, now, does it, uh, the number of researchers in the Muslim world, does it really somehow relate to how much people make or how rich the countries are? So uh, these are four categories uh, of the countries, of the OIC countries, the, the, those who they have very high income, the upper middle, the lower, and, and low. Uh, of course, some of these countries, they have no data, like a country called Libya, no data whatsoever. So it doesn't show up anywhere uh, in these here. Uh, so now if you look at the, um, uh, at the high income countries, uh, that's the blue line is their income, 
while the green is how many researchers they have per million. And clearly the numbers are so low, uh, they are, it is less than, they, this is the expenditure, how much they are spending, I'm sorry, on, on, on their uh, research, uh, the percentage of the GDP. Uh, so the Arab countries, they're very high income countries, they're spending approximately about 0.2% of their money on research. And again, is it really research? But still, we're going to believe that number anyway for a second. Uh, now, if you look at the upper middle class countries, uh, like which is here in Malaysia and Turkey, the bolded are the ones which are really taking into account. Of course, Malaysia and Turkey are, are spending more money. Uh, clearly, they are spending about 0.6%. So, uh, and if, we, if you look at the lower middle, which is among them is Albania, Azerbaijan, Egypt, and so on, and of course, the ones which they make more is Iran and Tunisia, uh, the upper middle, they, they are spending, or the lower middle income, they are spending approximately about 4%. So clearly, if you look at the high-income countries, they spend far less on, on research uh, than the lower-income countries. So really, there is a serious problem there. When, when those who they are very rich, uh, they are not spending much uh, money on their research because, of course, they are depending on what? On natural resources. That's where their money is coming from. Uh, now, if you look at the uh, second one is scholarly publications. Uh, this is how many... Uh, papers, and these are refereed journal papers. This is not the conference papers, which there can be thousands of them. This is the one which have gone through the peer review, and people say, yeah, this is original work. So if you look at this one here, uh, uh, the uh, uh, OIC countries, uh, they have really not much. I mean, the average approximately about 13 papers a year. So really, there is not much being published there. There is not creativity of, uh, of that. And, um, uh, well, of course, if you look at two countries, especially Turkey and Iran, they have done significant. So if you look at this, um, sorry, uh, if you look at this curve here, uh, uh, you can see a country which is, of course, uh, Egypt is the yellow line there, and staying approximately the same, approximately about 1,500 papers a year. And, of course, now this is the number, total number of papers, not papers per million. So, again, it's a country with 80 million people or so. Uh, the uh, Turkey were able to take off early on, and right now it is going up uh, uh, very, very much so. The same thing with Iran. It is also the number of, of papers published uh, is increasing. Now, if you look at these numbers here, this is the total numbers of papers published in 2010. And uh, if you look at that, clearly I'm just putting some countries here, which is Singapore, uh, and which is very close to Malaysia. The same people, the same country almost, it used to be. Uh, Israel, which is exactly in the Middle East, so you can convert with the Middle East countries, and, and so on. So clearly, if you look at the numbers here, uh, then, then um, if you look at them per million, which is all the way extreme right, a uh, country like Pakistan, which is a nuclear uh, company, uh, country it has only 0 0.02 uh, publications uh, per, per million. So anyway, so this is... Uh, uh, now, this is probably this is something which is good. I uh, have to bring something positive here. So this is here, the publications from 2000 until 2010. And, but I would also would like to make a comparison to see how much is the change over the last two years from 2008 to 2010. And clearly, if you look at that one, which is the, the column which is before the last, and, and you see there is quite an increase, uh, especially if you take a country like Malaysia, there is an increase about 86%. And if you take a country like Saudi Arabia, about 70%. So this is quite good. A uh, country like the um, uh, United Arab Emirates, about 26%. Now, if you go over the last 10 years, from 2000 to 2010, then you see a lot, clearly some of, the, some of these countries have increased their number of publications. Um, if you look at a country like Iran, it has increased by almost 1,200%, 12, uh, while Turkey is 300%. Uh, five hundred percent for Malaysia and so on. So clearly, there is there is there is a good change there. So there is something positive is happening over the last few years. Now, I ask the question here: Is it the problem with the Muslims, or just because of the Muslim world? So I said, okay, how about if I look at the Muslims who they live in the West and see how productive they are? And I just pick up some names here in the two thousand ten. Uh, if you look at some names, which is very common names then you see these people are very, very creative and very innovative and very, very, so, so clearly, it's not the problem with the people themselves. The problem with the system, where they live. And, and so there is no, that, what we call at the beginning, the innovative environment is not there. The system is not there. They're not investing into this. So clearly you can see here, uh, those people, they are 
they are very good uh, in, in what they do. Uh, now, if we look at the number of patents, this is uh, clearly now, I included Libya in this case here, so this would be okay. Uh, and, and this is uh, from the OIC, so this is the numbers that came from them. Uh, now, the first column is, is before 1996, and, uh, and the last column is 2009. And so if you look at all the years, a country like Malaysia have about 1,100 patents. A country like um, Jordan has 22. Uh, this is over all the years, by the way, ever, all years. A uh, country like Tunisia has about 116. A country called Libya has four. So that's, that's quite a significant number there. I'm sure there's enough Libyans who they have published hundreds of patents, uh, but they live in the West, not in Libya. Uh, so, so, uh, so anyway, so we're going to go from here because I'm running out of time. Uh, now, there is something called the, another measure. Usually when you look at all this, you say, okay, do live, people live well? So this is called something called the prosperity index. And this prosperity index takes into account a number of factors, about eight of them. It takes about the economy, uh, the entrepreneurship and opportunity, governance, education, health, safety and security, personal freedom, and social uh, capital. Uh, all of them, it's very clear what they mean. Social capital means they are, they are volunteering, they are giving charity, they are open and tolerant to their neighbors and other people and so on. So if you, uh, if you look at this, uh, I think I'm gonna go here. I took the, uh, the what they call the, uh, the Arab Spring countries. Those who they either made a revolution or they're in the process of, of making a revolution. Uh, so look, uh, if you look at this, this of course, uh, you look at the bottom there. Uh, first of all, if I put them also the country which is Norway, which is number one in prosperity index. This is the country which is number one in prosperity index, just to, so we can compare things with that. Now, uh, Tunisia ranked number 54. Uh, Syria ranked 81. Egypt ranked 89. And Yemen ranked 106. Of course, Libya doesn't show up anywhere, so it'd be very close to Yemen. Okay, uh, the, uh, the overall prosperity, uh, it, if it is positive, that means it is a development country. If it is negative, it is an underdeveloped country. Clearly, they show up they are negative. And of course, if you take a country like Yemen, it is minus 2.44. Now, uh, I'm going to take you, because I'm running out of time here, I'm going to take you to uh, the, the personal freedom, which I think is the reason for the revolutions there. If you look at that there, Yemen is minus 3.7, Egypt minus uh, four, uh, Syria minus two, uh, Tunisia minus three. So clearly people, they are very oppressed. And so they were able to revolt against, against their countries. Uh, now, I think I, um, uh, so, so really when at the end, I'm gonna say there is a ways that we can create this innovation and we can help people to create that environment. And, and clearly it, there is our elements. I run out my 18 minutes. So, uh, uh, so clearly, uh, we need to make this cycle work, the innovation, and so thank you very much. <laughs>